Battersea Power Station as a building has been derelict for decades now. The master plan itself is a regeneration project, probably one of the biggest regeneration projects in Europe. It's about opening up the power station to public use, it's about connecting the riverfront from Battersea Park through to Vauxhall, and it is about creating place. It has significant areas of new public facilities, it has riverfront cafes, it has community theatres within phase one within the Arches development, it has retail, gym facilities, leisure facilities, and then the power station itself you know, it has even more cultural content, you know, that has offices, residential, retail, shops, and it is about creating place, place that doesn't exist at the moment. Phase one is the first phase of a multi-phase master plan designed by Raphael Vanelli Architects. Seven phases across the scheme and it's the initial phase that is to set the benchmark and the catalyst for the redevelopment of the power station site as a whole. The total value of the phase was 500 million. The overall scheme for the development is worth 9 billion. SP Setter, Sindarbi and the Malaysian government have invested in Tabassi power station and regeneration of the area. Phase one comprises two residential buildings RS1A designed by Simpson Huff and Partners, RS1B designed by the Reich Marsh Morgan, DRMM architects. And those residential buildings sit on top of a two-storey podium building that comprises retail, some leisure facilities, offices, food and beverage units, and encompasses significant amounts of new public realm. Between the two residential units, there's a landscape courtyard, and in total, the scheme includes over 850 residential units. Carillion got involved in Battersea uh, as one of the tenderers and we put forward a compelling story. It's a unique building in the, in the sense that it may be 17 storeys high in parts, but it's longer than the shard in length if you was to stack them all together. The challenge with phase one was always to develop a design language that's related to the scale of the power station. The power station is an incredibly iconic building within the context of London. Um, one of the biggest brick buildings in Europe, probably the world. Um, so trying to find an appropriate architectural language that worked with that was the key challenge. So we started with the parameter plan developed by Vinoli Architects, which established the scale and the massing of the building, and then trying to make that work to give it some architectural identity and our own design. The starting point for that was two horizontal floor plates that we then shifted, grouped together in blocks of four, broke into smaller chunks, and they were articulated as a series of interlocking horizontal blocks. And in that way, there is an appropriate massing scale and form that works with the scale and power of the power station itself. Contrasting materials were then used, so we have a very glassy, reflective facade against the brick of the power station. The glass allows views out, but it also allows reflection from the power station as people move around. Getting out of the ground was through using sheet piling. Obviously the, the biggest part and the biggest hurdle was getting the earth out and we utilised not only road but also river and that took away a lot of CO2 from road traffic and we used the Thames to remove the, the waste. It was lifted by crane into a barge and then once it got to a certain capacity then it would be taken down river to the, the right site for disposal. The building superstructure is made up of in situ concrete and there are elements of precast as well. We had our own mixing plant on site that enabled us to speed up the process of getting concrete deliveries rather than trying to schedule it. There is pretty much every format of apartment you could come across in phase one. We've got townhouses over two storeys, we've got studios, one, two, three bed apartments, we have duplex apartments, we've got penthouses, we've apartments with front gardens, we've got roof gardens. There's a huge variety of different apartment types in there. The starting point for us was about creating a home. You know, these are places where people live um, and that's part of creating a, a successful community. It has to be identifiable as a home. The duration of the projects is a challenge. The delivery as a single phase is a challenge. You know, even though the master plan is split into um, several phases, phase one as an individual phase is a huge building in its own right. It is broken down into separate cores, but they are all delivered in parallel. 
After completing phase one, and as the project develops and delivers the remaining phases, I believe that it will rejuvenate Battersea. Uh, they've got great transportation links that are coming from the Northern Line extension. Then you've got by river or by bus, you'll get to see the iconic building, the Battersea itself, that will allow people to see it as a central area to come visit, shop, live and have fun. The opportunity to work in the context of iconic landmarks is unique. You know, it's a, it's a riverfront building adjacent to the River Thames. It's by Battersea Power Station and, you know, that's a one-off unique project. To be the first people to involved in the project is immense. It allows us to set our footprint down, but also enables us to deliver something quite unique to the not only our client, but also the community of Battersea and London as a whole.